While raw oysters are perfectly great, I actually prefer them a little grilled with some lemon dill butter. I'm gonna get the grill set up. So I've got hot coals in the charcoal chimney. So I'm gonna dump them out. Okay, one layer of coals. Just gonna spread them out a little bit. I don't want to incinerate these. I want to just slightly grill them. Okay, grate goes on. Next, I need aluminum foil. So this is my trick. What you want to do is keep the oysters upright so all the oyster liquor and the butter stay in the shell. And I found if I put sprinkled foil right on the grill, I can just set the oysters in the foil and it all stays in the shell. So while I put the oysters on the grill, I'll show you how I prepared them. I put a quarter of a pound of room temperature butter in the bowl of an electric mixer fitted with a paddle attachment, along with a teaspoon of minced garlic, a teaspoon of minced fresh dill, half a teaspoon of lemon zest, a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice, three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, and just mixed everything together. Then I used two small spoons to put about a teaspoon of herb butter on each oyster. I had bought them shocked on the half shell. Okay, last two on. I made these once for Jeffrey and went crazy. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the lid on, make sure the vents are open, and grill them for exactly three minutes. Okay, time's up, and they smell amazing. You can tell they're done when the butter's just sizzling and they just start to cook. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I'm just gonna put them on a platter. The butter's melted and the oyster's just ever so slightly cooked. I'm using Blue Point oysters from Long Island. They're really nice and plump, but pick any oysters you really like. Make sure they're really meaty. You know what I always say, cook oysters and a man shows up. <laughs> and a little fleur de sel at the end, just to bring out the flavors. Uh-oh, trouble just arrived. What's here? <laughs> so I made um, grilled oysters with lemon dill butter. Mm. You don't want any, do you? No, no, no. I'll just take the whole plate. <laughs> well, that looks good. He's a very good audience. So you just pick one up like that. Okay. And use your fork. They're hot, very hot. And just eat it. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. That's really good, isn't that oh. good? And then you can just sort of... Mmm, so good. Unbelievable. The dirty little secret about my foolproof ribs is they're actually cooked in the oven until they're falling off the bone and absolutely delicious. And then at the last minute, I throw them on the grill and they get that really charred flavor. They're so good and they're so easy to do. So for the barbecue sauce, I'm starting with one onion that I sauteed in vegetable oil. I'm gonna put in one tablespoon of chopped garlic. Just cook it for a minute because you don't want to overcook the garlic. One cup of tomato paste. It's got a lot of ingredients, but frankly, a lot of them you probably already have in your pantry. One cup of cider vinegar, a little acidity in this. One cup of honey. Actually adds a little sweetness, and then it'll caramelize on the grill. One cup of Dijon mustard. It's a lot, I know. One cup of hoisin sauce. That's the start of the Asian ingredients. Half a cup of Worcestershire sauce. Half a cup of soy sauce. You still with me? <laughs> Two tablespoons of chili powder. That's one and two. One tablespoon of ground cumin. Just gives great flavor, really depth of flavor. And a little bit of heat. One and a half teaspoons of crushed red pepper flakes. You want it to be a little hot, right? I'm just gonna bring that to a boil. Mix everything together and let it simmer for 30 minutes. All those flavors are just gonna deepen and get absolutely delicious. They're gonna be so good with the ribs. The barbecue sauce is ready, time to make the ribs. I use St. Louis ribs and I find them perfect. They have a lot of meat on the bone and they're not too big to handle. Okay, so that's two teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of pepper. I just season the meat side, not the bone side. And now I'm just gonna slather it with barbecue sauce. So big ladle. I always use aluminum foil underneath it so it's easy to clean up, because these are good and messy. So now I'm gonna cover them loosely with foil, 350 degrees for an hour and 45 minutes until the meat is falling off the bone. Whoa, don't those look fantastic? 
So at this point, I put on a little more barbecue sauce because I think it really needs it. And this is gonna really caramelize on the grill, get that nice barbecue flavor. Okay, and the rest of it, I'm gonna pour into a dish and take outside for dipping once they're all done. Okay, I've got the ribs, I've got the sauce. See you at the grill. I'm just gonna brush it with oil just to make sure the ribs don't stick. Just extra precaution. Whoa, that's a little more exciting than I thought. Okay, let's grill these ribs. I'll place them on the grill, rib side down. Put the lid on with the vents open and grill them for five minutes. Then take the lid off, turn the ribs meat side down, put the lid back on and cook them for another five minutes. Oh wow, look how delicious and perfectly browned these are. So I'll put them on a board, cover them tightly with aluminum foil, and let them rest for 10 minutes. These look fantastic. I only wish you could smell them. Mm, this looks so good. Mm. They're meaty, they're flavorful, they're tender. You know what, once I stopped incinerating ribs on the grill and started roasting them first and then barbecuing them, there's no going back. There's a point in every summer where I just can't look at one more barbecued chicken. And I thought, I'm gonna test a recipe for flattened chicken. Maybe like a Tuscan chicken with lemon and garlic. So I'm gonna take a whole chicken. And in order to flatten it, I'm just gonna take the backbone out. Of course you can have the butcher do this, but it's really quite simple. Just take your knife and run it right along one side of the backbone. And then right along the other side of the backbone, just take it right out. So, I've got a flat chicken that's gonna grill evenly. Need lots of salt, give it lots of flavor. Both sides. To really bring out the chickenness in it. Okay. So I'm just gonna put this in a pan that's big enough to hold it. That's perfect. Now I'm gonna need some rosemary for the marinade. At the end of the day, chicken's pretty bland, so I wanna infuse it with as much flavor as I can. So for the Tuscan lemon chicken, I'm gonna start with lots of fresh rosemary, about a tablespoon. And a tablespoon of chopped garlic. Always good on chicken. I need two teaspoons of lemon zest. So, two teaspoons I need Maybe one and a half lemons. Okay, that's about two teaspoons. So right into the marinade. And then freshly squeezed lemon juice. What I'm basically making is a lemon vinaigrette with lots of fresh herbs. Just gonna squeeze. I need about a third of a cup, which is a little more than one lemon, maybe one and a half. Lots of pepper. A third of a cup of olive oil. Stir it all together. And just pour it right over the chicken. This is why you want a dish that's just the size of the chicken because you want it to really soak in the marinade. Okay, that's part one, marinating. Part two, the grill. And this chicken on the grill is gonna be fantastic. First thing I need to do is brush the grill really hot coals, but just one layer. I don't want it too hot, otherwise the chicken's gonna burn. So the key to cooking something like this is to make sure it's all about the same thickness, right on the grill. And at this point, most Tuscan chickens have like bricks wrapped in foil, all kinds of complicated things on top. But I just take the dish that it was marinated in, put it right on top, and that makes sure that it's really even. When the chicken goes on, don't pour the marinade over, otherwise you'll find your chicken engulfed in flames. All the oil will start to burn. Not pretty. I'm just gonna cook it for about 12 to 15 minutes on each side. I actually think this might work out okay. 
So there are two ways to tell whether it's done. One is a meat thermometer, and one is just to cut between the thigh and the breast and see if the juice is run clear, but 150 degrees. Perfect. So I'm gonna take it off, put it on the board, cover it with aluminum foil, and let it rest, and it'll continue cooking a little bit. And the last little surprise of this recipe is grilled lemon. I'm just gonna put the lemon on the grill, and it gives a real smoky flavor to the lemon. It's fantastic, better than a sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this in quarters, squeeze it with the lemon juice, and have Tuscan grilled lemon chicken. Next is Asian grilled salmon. I can't tell you how many times I've made this, and I guarantee you it's really easy. But it's also elegant. So I'm gonna start with a nice piece of salmon, this beautiful center cut salmon. The idea of this recipe is I'm gonna make a marinade, pour half of it over the salmon, and then after the salmon's grilled, pour the other half over. So it becomes both a marinade and a sauce, and it keeps it really moist and flavorful. So I'm gonna cut five or six slices. Just make sure you get all the way through the skin. I'm gonna take these slices and just put them in a dish, and I'm gonna marinate them in. This is about three pounds of salmon. You wanna figure about a half a pound per person. Okay. Now I'm gonna make the marinade. So I have a half a teaspoon of fresh chopped garlic in the bowl. Gives it a nice bite. I need two tablespoons of good Dijon mustard. That's about two tablespoons. Three tablespoons of good soy sauce. This is the Asian part of the Asian marinated salmon. And six tablespoons of good olive oil. I like California olive oil. I think it's got a good flavor, but it's not too strong for the sauce. I'm just gonna whisk this together. The sauce is particularly great because the mustard emulsifies it. So we're just going to pour half on, spread it out. Okay, great. Asian grilled salmon is just done, perfect. So you can either take the skin off or not, but I think it's just fine with the skin on. Really up to you. Okay, I'm going to turn it over on this plate. Oof, that looks good. I'm turning it over particularly, it looks nice that way, but I want the sauce to get into the meat of the salmon. This is a hot and messy job. I think four pieces will be perfect for three of us. Whoa, I'm just gonna put the sauce on next. Okay, I'm just gonna put the rest of the sauce on. It keeps the fish really moist and flavorful. Don't use the marinade from the raw fish. So my bridge friends are coming over for a game of bridge, and I thought, you know, instead of the usual snacks, I'm gonna make something special. So, I've got a grill going, I've got hot coals, cool cocktail, and I'm gonna make sliders, which are baby burgers. So it's two pounds of ground beef. I use really premium beef, I like grass-fed beef. Three tablespoons of olive oil. That keeps it nice and moist. This is really easy to make. And some good spicy mustard, Dijon mustard, about a tablespoon. A tablespoon of garlic. I'm gonna chop it really fine. So that's three cloves of garlic. So sliders are great. They're small hamburgers. Okay, one tablespoon of garlic, finely minced, right into the mixture. Some fresh thyme, about a teaspoon of fresh thyme leaves. Just peel them right off the stems. Okay, teaspoon of fresh thyme, two teaspoons of salt, teaspoon of pepper. Give it a big stir with a fork. Fork's really important. You don't wanna compact the meat, you wanna keep it really nice and light. There are two big mistakes of hamburgers. One is compacting it when you're actually 
forming the burger, and the second one is pressing it when it's on the grill. Gets rid of all the nice juices into the grill. You wanna keep these moist and light and delicious. Okay, time to make the burgers. So this mixture's gonna make, would normally make six burgers, but I'm gonna make 12 sliders. And so they're approximately two inches wide by one inch thick, and they're gonna go in little brioche rolls. Perfect. I got these fabulous little brioche rolls. My friend Eli makes them. I'm just gonna grill them for just a couple of seconds until they're toasted. I think I'll just do the bottom. And I'm gonna do them with arugula and grated Gruyere and sliced tomato. I think that'd be perfect for the bridge party. Okay, let's see how. This isn't gonna take very long, I don't think. Look at that, perfect, excellent. I have sliced tomatoes, those wonderful vine ripened tomatoes in red and yellow and orange. It'll be smells so good, the, the brioche buns. About four to five minutes on each side. And these are gonna be the juiciest, most delicious sliders anybody ever had. Hamburgers are perfectly cooked. Fabulous.